Hello, I'm Trentor. Today, we're going to talk about Aura Finance. And importantly, we're going to take a look under the hood at what's going on with Aura Finance and some of the latest votes and some of the latest incentives that are really going around as this protocol builds out its CBX-like layer on top of Balancer. Now, I know what brought you here. It's likely something about amazing returns or amazing performance over the last 30 days. And I'm not going to lie, the 600% increase in the value of this token from essentially its all-time low on June 17th through to today as it fights in this bear market is something truly to behold. But there's reason for this. There's a reason why the Aura token has continued to increase in value and while people and DAOs continue to amass this token. First thing to talk to was what's currently going on with the price. As you'll note, from the launch, and in particular the LBP, the lowest the token ever got was at around 45 cents. As of today, its absolute maximum was $3.50, although we've since retraced a little bit from there. The rationale, however, behind this steady rise is not something that's really quite uh, surprising to those who've done the math. The first thing to understand is that a single vote-locked aura directs approximately 0.4 VBAL votes. What does all this mean? Well, this means that the VL, the, basically the aura token itself is able to direct $5 worth of balance of value towards essentially emissions. How does this work? Well, in summary, the VBAL token itself is essentially equivalent to 2.5 balance of tokens. So in other words, with the current price of around $5, two of those puts a VBAL price at approximately $12 to $12.50. If an aura token is able to direct 0.4 of $12 or $12.50, then we're really looking at a token price that is more close to really $5 or $5.50 at fair value. The current value is significantly below this. So not surprisingly, you'll consider to see, you'll likely continue to see, I should say, uh, ongoing a positive price momentum for this token. And that's what we're seeing at the moment. Now, notably today, we're going to go through a few of the reasons why we think this has occurred, and just to talk through some of the successes that have really uh, happened here for, for Aura. And the first and most important big step for Aura was getting these balanced gauges, in particular, the ones that provided the liquidity to itself up and going. The top left here, you'll see essentially that is the VBAL token and how it's managed to achieve uh, essentially the, a, a liquidity pairing with the Aura BAL token, so an Aura Lot Balancer. This is very important as it enables those two tokens to maintain PEG and therefore be something that uh, in particular traders are happy to have and it provides those arbitrage opportunities to keep those two tokens at PEG. The top right also provides deeper liquidity for the Aura token itself, but please note this thing launched in a bear market, so the depth of liquidity is nowhere near where it could be for some of these massive DAOs to get in. So again, be prepared to expect some significant volatility and price rises in this token as larger players seek to accumulate their Aura. Some of the things you may have seen on Twitter at the moment, uh, this is a result of essentially the first Aura gauge vote. And what you saw in this instance was a significant increases in the returns. So you'll note that Lido tokens or essentially wrapped ETH and ETH token pairings, uh, in significant increases from 8 through 22%, significant increases on stables, as well as uh, things such as the Badger uh, wrapped Bitcoin 80-20 position also went from 3.6 up to 7.5. So some very interesting increases in the, uh, the amounts achieved essentially from the initial Initial balancer token and the balancer pool across to the aura pool. You'll also see recently, or I suppose it on Twitter, to be honest, uh, what's been happening with Nosus Dow. They've recently deposited up to 10 million in their balancer pool token of uh, wrapped or staked ETH and ETH. What this does is essentially provide significant fees back to both balancer and to aura in terms of trading volume. And again, as essentially the, the staked ETH and ETH positions are constantly being traded and up backwards and forwards. Now, anybody who's been following the news will know how important this is, in particular for groups like Celsius and others who have significant state ETH positions. So what Gnosis has essentially done here is it sought to incentivize their balancer pool token or this position uh, by not only amassing uh, Aura tokens themselves, but also providing these significant deposits uh, to, to achieve that liquidity. So they're really looking to pump in a lot of uh, not only liquidity, but also their own, I suppose, voting power into that particular token or pool, I should say. To switch gears just for a quick moment, Aura itself was airdropped to a number of DeFi power users. Now, we've talked about this previously in other videos, but I did just want to highlight today. If you were one of the Convex holders and you needed over a thousand Convex tokens, a Balancer holder, or alternatively, a Lobster DAO NFT holder, you were likely achieved or likely uh, been given the airdrop. To claim that airdrop, you need to go across to the Aura app, go up to the top right and click on claim, and you'll then be given an option essentially to either stake, a claim and stake, I should say, or claim and lock, or alternatively, simply to claim to your wallet. 
If you choose to claim to your wallet, you'll pay a 30% fee of that. So you'll only receive 70% of the airdrop. That 30% essentially will then be redistributed after the airdrop period back to those who did lock their vote locked, uh, sorry, did lock their aura tokens. The reason I bring all this up is that the airdrop period ends on the 14th of July. So if you're in that basket of people who are likely airdropped, make sure you get across and claim your aura airdrops as soon as you can. Redacted Cartel, as many of you are aware, have recently launched Hidden Hand. Now, I'm not here to promote Hidden Hand or Redacted Cartel necessarily, but what I will say is that you'll note ongoing partnerships with Balancer and Redacted, who've recently uh, decreased the overall fees that Balancer pays, as well as the recent creation of the Bribe Protocol platform, or the Bribe platform, I should say, for Aura specifically on Hidden Hand. Now, we'll go through that very shortly, but what this means is there's now significant ways for DAOs to seek to direct Aura votes towards their balance of positions to again increase fees. So that entire curve wars and influence wars type stuff you saw, saw happening with Convex and Curve is just starting now and you're very early to it in terms of balance of aura and then what's happening with Red Arctic Cartel's plan with Hidden Hand. The final thing to talk to, and we'll go through this very shortly, in particular on the balance of protocol, is the fight essentially that developed from day one between Aura and the Aura token holders and the balance of whale. Now, the balance of well, not nefarious, they're acting in their own best interest, it makes perfect sense. But what they've been doing is essentially gaming the system with their incredible stock of VBAL tokens. They've essentially been providing significant and outsized returns on pools where they own a significant percentage of the actual underlying token. And we'll go through that very shortly. What's notable is that Aura has achieved at this stage, essentially the largest single position. So with over 26% of all VBAL are currently in circulation, Aura currently has this locked and wields it and is therefore the, much, is the largest wallet. Now, that doesn't mean the world doesn't exist and doesn't still hold significant voting power. But at this stage, we're not entirely sure what that particular whale is doing and we're not sure how they're going to continue to vote. So very interesting stuff to see how this plays out. Now, I mentioned I'd go through a few different things uh, and what we'll do is we'll go through some of the apps to talk about this. The first is on Balancer. So what I was talking about in terms of what's happening with the whale, if you go across to Balancer itself, go to VBAL, this gives you a list of the pools eligible for liquidity mining. And these are those things that in particular I mentioned earlier, or were keen to have uh, to be have approved essentially as gauges. So you'll note the wrap staked ETH, ETH pool is currently uh, providing significant returns, but it's this position here, this cream wrapped ETH position uh, that from what uh, everyone understands was currently primarily dominated by that whale. And for this reason, that as you know, Cream and Wrapped ETH are unlikely to have a significant trading volume, that the APR on these tokens when staked is between 81% and 202% or 201.94, depending how much VBAL you have allocated towards that particular pool. So that's, that's currently what's happening there uh, with the well. Now, this has happened with other tokens. There's absolutely no negative things to say about Cream or any of the tokens that this has been done with. But it's essentially something that was gaming some of the, uh, the emissions that were coming out of Balancer. Now, all's fair in love and war. That's what's certainly what's going on uh, with Aura at the moment as they seek to amass more of this voting power. Now, if you go across to Aura itself, you'll note the VBAL share here, the TVL over 100 million now, as well as the amount of voting Aura locked. Once you click on this open app link here, it'll take you across to this page and you'll see the different balance LP tokens. So essentially you're from here, you go across, you mint one of the positions. So you mint a balance of pool token position uh, in here, whichever one you like. But instead of staking it over on BAL, you take it across to Aura and you deposit it here. Now, when you're on Aura, you can see the different tokens here that are enabled by Aura at the moment, and you can add a number of different positions with various APYs. As you click on the information, it gives you a breakdown. You'll see the likely swap fee APR, and you'll see the projected APR in terms of balance remissions, as well as Aura emissions. You'll also note that the gauge boost for a lot of these particular positions is much higher. So you as an individual in Balancer would not be able to most likely get a 2.2 increase because you don't hold sufficient a sufficient percentage of all the VBAL out there. And that's how this protocol works. So being part of a social aggregation system like Aura enables you to essentially receive rewards as if you were a whale yourself. So that's what makes this place so interesting. Now, if you go down to some of the different pools of note, there's some new pools here you can see allocated to new. Uh, you'll note in particular this pool, so the 333333, which looks at Aura Bell, Gravi Aura, which is a new token and a new product that's come out of, uh, out of Badger Dow token, and the wrapped ETH position. The projected APR on this is yet to be determined because the Gravi Aura auto votes on the, po on the uh, pool it's in, so very interesting. Also of significant interest is what's going on with this cream pool. 
So you'll note here that the balance of position, 216%, which is the maximum you would achieve on, on balance for itself, is then matched by significant aura voting as well, so aura incentives. What makes this interesting is that you'll note these very high APRs up to 660% here, whilst there's also a value locked of over a million bucks. Now, of course, when you look at 1,000% here for USDC PAL, for example, with only 40 grand, you can assume that as people ape in, this projected API is going to go down. What's interesting is this thing already has over a million and it's projected to have this high in API. So very interesting. And the reason I'm bringing this up is sure does start to smell suspicious that potentially this whale is starting to either come on board to Aura or is certainly starting to uh, uh, either accumulate Aura themselves or split their votes or, or who knows what their plans are. They're certainly better at, uh, at some of this stuff than I am and have deeper pockets, but it's just interesting to see this pool uh, sort of develop. Now, if we go across to some of the partners, and I mentioned that we would do that, first is to look at uh, Hidden Hand. So this is the Aura page. If you go to Hidden Hand here, you go to Aura, this shows you the current bribe market and what's currently going on. There's another day and 15 hours thereabouts. Uh, and what you can also do is vote delegate. So if you wanted to, you can delegate to Hidden Hand and they'll provide the best possible rewards to you. If you want to vote yourself, you can. Some of the options at the moment are voting for the Aura Wrapped ETH pool or alternatively the FTT Wrapped ETH or this, uh, basically this stable coin pool here. And it gives you a breakdown of what the voting amounts are for each of these. Balancer has a similar pool and there's a number of other pools here for Floored Out, Frax, Ribbon, Token Mac, et cetera. And you can have a look at that yourself uh, in your own time. The next one to talk to you from a partner protocol is for Badger Dow and some of the things they're doing. They're currently building out this product, which is essentially Gravy Aura, which is a uh, wrapped Aura token, which essentially provides um, basically like auto voting onto the pools it's included in. So that's why I showed you previously that 33, 33, 33 pool, which included Gravy Aura. So a very interesting new set of technologies that Badger is building out here. It's designed essentially to enable other DAOs who seek to uh, basically provide enhanced liquidity to their own pool positions. And that's what something that uh, Graviora, when paired with those pool positions, would be likely to do. At the moment, it's in a bootstrapping phase and is receiving significant uh, Badger boosted rewards, uh, with Badger being uh, the native governance token uh, for Badger DAO. The third one to talk to is on Nosis DAO, and I haven't gone into this one quite as much, and I apologize for my lack of familiarity uh, with Nosis DAO. But notably, they're really leaning into what's happening, what I understand at least, with the state ETH, ETH positions and their ongoing partnership and their significant donation, uh, I should say, conversion of 100,000 VBAL at launch into Aurabal and their recent deposit of 10 million balance of pool tokens is really providing that uh, significant yield from what I can understand to those who have state ETH and ETH and are seeking to provide uh, liquidity or have better liquidity for those positions. So something that's very interesting moving forward. The last thing I'm going to talk about is, I suppose, some of the most contentious stuff, and that is to do with some of the improvement proposals currently underway. The first one to talk to is uh, Aura Improvement Proposal number two. And this is essentially Aura's partnership with Olympus Dow. It's been proposed by an Olympus uh, individual as well as an Aura-based individual, these two, Xerox Felix and Xerox Limitations. And it's very interesting for what it's trying to do. Notably though, it's a $100,000 treasury swap, uh, which is designed essentially to whitelist Aura for the flex loans option um, in Olympus. And then importantly provide uh, this equivalent amount of, uh, of Aura tokens back to Olympus Dow to enable them for some of their positions. What's interesting here is the discussion has been very rich with significant uh, input from a lot of different people. I think the best way to look at this at this stage, and I don't have uh, the time to go through everything here, and this is just my opinion, is that essentially uh, the current deal, it seems to be uh, favors Olympus Dow. It seems to be slightly more in their favor uh, than Aura, and there's concerns about dilution of Aura holders. But at the same token, for the long-term health of Aura, the more Aura is able to have partnerships with powerful and wealthy DAOs such as Olympus Dow, the better for the long-term health of Aura itself. So clearly, I think there's going to be a little bit of backwards and forwards here from community members and ideally between Olympus and Aura to come up with a solution that best suits both parties and provides the best possible outcome. So again, we'll see how that plays out. AIEP2 is currently in the forum under discussion uh, for those of you who are interested. The last one to talk to is something that's only got a couple of hours left to go. So three hours left. On Balancer itself, there's a number of different gauge votes currently up. So you remember I went through here on Aura Finance and I showed you all of the different pools. Essentially, each of these pools have to be approved to sit in one of these pools. So a pool eligible for liquidity mining. So they have to be in here first, approved by Balancer, and then they can get all the boosted rewards on Aura. So at the moment, there's a number of different proposals up on Balancer to try to get that going. These two here, the Tudor Bell 2080, so this gauge vote here uh, is basically uh, almost completely done. So it's like 99% for it. So that'll happen. 
Uh, same again with this magic USDC gauge on Arbitrum. Again, uh, something that's uh, you know very highly in support of. But it's this one here, BIP27, that's getting uh, the most conversation. And this is something that uh, I think a lot of people really enjoy looking at uh, with regards to Balancer and Aura, how, how things play out. If you click on the forum here, you'll get an awful lot of the discussion on how things have gone. Um, basically, the, the key part to note here is how close this is. So at the moment, you've got 235,000 versus 230. A uh, very close vote at this stage. Uh, what is it? 50.59% versus 49.41. Uh, kind of like a US election, right? Hard to call either way till it's uh, at the exact last moment. So very interesting stuff. And how this plays out in particular for essentially what's a, a derivative BTC token, a wrapped Bitcoin token, and that Graviora token I talked about before. Highly experimental but type uh, vault here or type gauge, I should say, with that uh, very interesting stuff. So very interesting to see how that plays out. Um, personally, I'm for it. I think it's quite interesting, but there's a lot of great arguments from uh, both sides on what should be looked at. So again, very interesting stuff here on how the long-term health of the protocol can be aligned to the type of things that are being discussed. What I'm gonna leave you with at the moment is a quick look at price. The order token itself currently sits at uh, $2.90. Now, $2.90, if you remember what I talked about before, is not particularly expensive, and it's down about 60% even on the day for its, uh, from its all-time high, although still up from 7.8%. If you look across at the balance of token, here you'll see the current price is $4.89, or $4.90, let's call it. From what we know, balancer, a VBAL token essentially is two and a half balancer, right? To get one of those VBALs. So the simple math is you times this, we'll call it $5, times that by 2.5 and you get $12.50. What I told you before is that an Aura token votes basically the equivalent of 0 0.4 of essentially a VBAL. Now, not surprising, that's pretty down close to the actual price of a balancer token itself. What that really means is if you work out 0 0.4 of 12 or 1250 or whatever, you're really looking at that high fours, low fives uh, sort of price level uh, for the Aura token. Now, as I said previously, uh, there's no reason for it not to be at the same sort of price as balancer because it essentially controls that much governance power and controls that much in terms of emissions. So again, very interesting. What you're really getting the discount on here is the fact that it's a new protocol and people know far less about it than they know all about Balancer. So look, very interesting. Nothing in this uh, video is financial advice, of course, and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Thanks for listening and bye-bye.